Hey, welcome back to the Isaac Jardine Podcast. Today I had on Luis Borja. He's a creative based out of Minneapolis. He's been just taking photos and videos since forever. He's dipped into all different fields like modeling, photography, videography, clothing design, all the above. This is the first time we've ever talked, so it was a lot of introductory fun stuff, just talking about what we're up to. Um, it was a really good time. Let's get into it. Always intimidating, dude. I don't tell them it's crazy, though. They're crazy for putting that one on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> How you been, man? Bro, beautiful, bro. Literally, I cannot ask for a, a cooler life, that's for sure. And me, the people right. like you, bro, I bet you yet. I've seen you all over, like, Instagram, all over the internet, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Bro. It's cool. Thank you for the opportunity, too. Yeah, no problem, dude. I love, you know, I have these conversations anyways, so I'm like, dude, why not just, like, record them and put them out? Hopefully, uh, people get inspo from it, you know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, so, I've probably been following you before this, but first time I ran into your name was, obviously, uh, I'm I'm big ups with, with Vlad and Henry. Love those two boys. Yeah. Uh, when, <laughs> And uh, you took you took Vlad to his uh, first college outing, and he was very excited about that. He's talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you know I the boy? Podcast, bro. Shout out Vlad and shout out Henry. Cool people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old but too, bro. Like I I listened to a couple of the podcasts. I want to say you know first off, good job, bro. Congratulations. Like you're doing it, bro. It's it's really cool. And you said you're from like a small town, right? You're at Ames right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I love that you're uh, pushing yourself past like societal norms. That A minus really, really tricked you to to really do it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no I'm kidding. kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you where are you at right now? Are you in Illinois? Is what I saw. So I I just left. I just moved back to Minnesota. So I'm actually in Minneapolis right now. Six months. Gotcha. Let's go, baby. Uh, what are you there for? <laughs> Um, so I was just doing like some sales job for the last couple of like a year and a half, pretty much. And I'm like, bro, I need to get back to like what makes me happy, what makes my heart, you know, pound and whatever gives me excitement. And that's like video creating pictures, modeling. So ever since I've been back home, I've honestly just been trying to, you know, move first and get situated first. Um, but then also like really network and really, really put myself out there and Talk to as many people as possible. I don't care what they do. It's kind of like you, right? You just want to like chat with people and meet people. And that's the only way you can grow and actually become the person that you want to do. So the last couple of days, though, to answer your question, I would say I've been doing some pictures, just some photo shoots. I did a runway the other day. Awesome. Shout out to Panache and all the models. Um, and I have a runway shoot on Saturday. So I'm really excited for that. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you get plugged into that? So one of my friends, uh, Peyton, shout out Peyton Hanson. You gonna meet him out here sometime in the future. Here. He has a cool story too. Um, but he, I don't know, he's really good at mar- or, uh, meeting people and just networking. So he met like Prince Williams. I'm not too sure if you know the artist, the local music scene. No, not too well, not too well. Got you. Well, he knows this artist and this artist pretty much knows a lot of people. And he had his clothing in a runway show. So uh Peyton was gonna go shoot it and he was like bro you're here in the city like let's go shoot it together I'm like hey but how, do you tell me the word I'm there <laughs> yeah I'm yeah coming. yeah yeah how's the Minneapolis scene you you love it there uh I wouldn't say I necessarily love it I would say within the last couple of like years that I've been gone bro so when I was here first I was trying to find a scene I was trying to find a bubble I was trying to find the people like me and you some creatives and they're just like, I don't know if there was any or if I just didn't know the right people or like whatever. But to me, it like the city just felt dead in creativeness. And ever since I left Minnesota, I... <laughs> yeah, dude, I got an alarm going off. What the heck? Anyways. <laughs> uh, but ever since I like came back or ever since I left, sorry, um, I've been I've been seeing and I've been noticing the Minnesota, like the brand, the creativity in the 612. There's a lot more artists. There's a lot more photographers. There's a lot more creatives. There's a lot more people that just want to grow the scene together as a collective, uh, like Waterway. I'm sure everybody knows Waterway. It's yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. they're trying to put on for local talent, and it doesn't matter what you do. And I, I seen it, and I'm like, I have to come back. And every time I come back, it's love, brothers. There's a lot of people, cool people here that like to work. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, my first dip into it was when I met Henry Vlad. I I uh, took a trip up and just stayed with them, and and we went on a like a photo walk, and there was just a bunch of other really cool people there. There was a shot where we looked like Avengers because we were on a rooftop. One of the guys uh, broke a lock and got us on a rooftop. Josh Hild. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. But uh, just yeah, there's definitely a scene there. I've just never. I don't know why I'm four hours away, but never really dipped into the Minneapolis until I was what, like eighteen. I mean, it's a fun little spot. Yeah, it's yeah. decent. I would say it's not like the best place to be if you're a creative. But honestly, if you are a creative, it doesn't matter where you are because you're gonna create regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking about creating regardless, um, you've been hitting consistent social media posts uh what's what's kept you on that what what got you started there just making daily videos well the the reels itself just came like pretty recent i would say within the last couple of months um try to stay consistent the only thing that really keeps me going is knowing that one day i'm gonna be old i'm gonna be great and i'm not gonna be able to move the same way i'm moving right now and so regardless of what my you know what i'm scared of or what i'm nervous of like right now i'm i'm only this young right now i'm this is the youngest I'll ever be. So I need to use this to my full advantage. I need to record. I need to take pictures. I need to network. I need to, you know, become the version of myself that I want to. I need to get my dream, the dream that I want to get. How do I get there? I need to take the steps there. So to really answer the question, though, damn, bro, I would just say just being able to capture this life and being able to have something so when I'm 80, so I can look back on it and just be like, Bro, what a crazy ride this was. Like, this was a movie, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, what I take from your your videos, which is fun, is just like, of course, both me and you both have just been using our iPhones more, first of all. Yeah. You, can get, you can get some fun stuff with your iPhones, and it's zero yeah. stress. It's zero stress. Super. Um. Also, you're just recording, like, the normalcy of your day. Like, obviously, a lot of, a lot of gym stuff, which I've been falling in love with, too. It's just like... If you can fall in love with the process every day, it's just, it makes the stuff that everyone strives for, like the money and the success, less prevalent. It's just like, no, nah, just focus on your day, man. It's, it's, it's fun. That's what I've been really enjoying about your stuff. Thank you, bro. I really appreciate it. I like the, uh, are you still rocking the same gym fit? The hoodie on with the sweatpants? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. It's the, I love it. Is old dude with the champion stuff still at your gym? Uh, I I haven't seen him recently, but the the man the man is so swaggy. I mean, like, how can you be that old but no? How can you be that in, bro? He doesn't even have to be in. He doesn't care. He just knows. He's like, all I do is golf, and I wear this dope outfit to the gym, and I look good doing it. And people like Isaac are staring at me. <laughs> That's dope. I'm excited to get back to the gym though, cause. I fell off the gym grind ever since I moved back from Illinois because I don't really have a spot right now. I'm just at my mom's house. Right. I'm trying to figure out what's the living situation where I'm going to work out, blah, 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 right? Figure out right. regular life. Yeah, yeah. Planet Fitness, not a bad way to go, man. You got any ones close to you here? Oh, uh, probably. Yeah, I have a, we used to have like a Planet Fitness membership, but I was using somebody else's uh, like black card. I was their guest. So every time. We oh, yeah. Them, yeah. Them. So now, right now, I can't. It's all calisthenics. It's just push ups, handstands. Same with Vlad and Henry. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Calisthenics. What? What's your? Uh, what's your go to? I've been. I've been doing just like pretty much supported chin ups for a while, just to like you know build up that 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 grind. Because without it, I can only do like three or four. Like I have a total respect for calisthenics people. Uh, what got you in, and what kept you going with calisthenics? Same thing as Vlad, pretty much, bro. You see a little YouTube video or a little Vine or whatever back in the day, and people are doing handstands or they're doing crazy flips or a muscle up, and I'm like, bro, that's crazy. And I'm I'm skinny, like I have yeah. no muscle at the time when I watch this. I'm like, how are they doing that, bro? I want to do that. Um, one of my friends, he was at the gym at Lifetime, and he's like, bro, come with me one time. So I went with him. Um, I've been pretty active my whole life, but to get into calisthenics, it was literally just like not having a gym for a little bit. And really just, you know, focusing on trying to do handstands, whether that's in my room on the wall, doing some dips on a chair. Even like Vlad said, like sometimes it was, it was funny because he had like the gallows or whatever. And he said he was like curling. Them. It's pretty much the same thing, bro. If you're like, if you're really down to, to work out, like you can make your most out of anything, bro. A few push-ups on the ground, a few handstand push-ups or whatever, you got it, bro. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, it's a fun little. Th- well, it's it's humbling too. It's like, yeah, I put on pounds this year. I'm lifting and stuff. But when it comes to calisthenics, that you gotta you gotta do calisthenics in order to develop those muscles, man. Like I, I'm like, all right, I'm a little stronger now. Let's see how I can do. Like I said, all I can do like pull out three or four. I'm like, all right, to the assisted machine I go. <laughs> hey, that's fine. I would say I would recommend try uh, using resistance band and use like the the tighter ones at first to give you more of a more of like a help or assist yeah. and then slowly out from there and you'll slowly start building that and then you'll you'll have no band one day with like 10 pull-ups you'll be like bro this is easy yeah, yeah. <laughs> pull-ups i probably can do about i could do like seven seven pull-ups i'd say you could probably but, do you could, and bro, you could yeah probably, you could do yeah all right yeah we'll, we'll go for that dude uh like i said don't know way too much about you, so I want to know the overview. Where'd you get the name uh, Project Sploosh? I love it. So we're going to throw it back to, like, I, I don't even know. I've had multiple YouTube channels in the past, and I was always trying to think of something that just, like, yeah, I don't know, at least made me smile when I heard it or something. And me and my friend Dustin at the time, uh, we had, like, a little, like, dancing page or, like, a little uh, jerking. You know what that is? Like No. Like, like dance. Uh, just 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 little dances like like musically type stuff <laughs> nah, 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 nah. it was like, no, like actual dance grab it bro it was, yeah like real middle school stuff bro like right on a little random flip like camera and then you edit it on some random website and then it's just horrible bro <laughs> <laughs> that's how we all started man exactly um but for the project sploosh name me and my friend were really brainstorming just names for a channel we wanted to do like a a Dutton style challenge uh, YouTube page because challenges were huge at the time. So we were watching Holes, the movie. I don't know if you know that movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but when they're like in the desert or whatever with the peaches, it was, they called it Sploosh. And I was like, bro, what the, like, that sounds goofy. <laughs> yeah. We're playing, me and Dustin are playing 2K and we're just throwing names back and forth. And I always saw like this vision and what like I'm going down right now. It's, it's just a project. Everything in my life, I have different projects I'm working on. So I wanted it to be something around project, but I didn't know what the last part was. Um, I might need to do a rebranding because people are like, sploosh, bro, like that's that's inappropriate. I'm like, no, that's not yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sploosh was named after the peaches from Holes. And right. I don't know, it, it was a middle school, me and, and my buddy just throwing around names and we were like, bro, let's do it. Just wrote it on YouTube and ran with it. So that's where we're at. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. Um, when did you develop that sort of mindset that it's just a bunch of different projects like life is um because because i recently kind of developed that same thing this last year i just see the world way way differently now i love it i love it um recently i would say my phone's at 10 percent enough to hold this one oh uh, <laughs> recently the way i've been able to like look at my past and actually give it that word of a project is i've been able to read a lot of self-help books but in the past um i would say just from my experience like living in ecuador and living in costa rica and seeing how like people really come from absolutely nothing bro and like we just have to be grateful for even being here and when you go to those third world countries and and just see those people living way below like human necessity needs or whatever um it just gives you a, a feeling of gratitude for even just like walking on this planet but I think when I came back to Minnesota and I just realized that there were so many different things in my past, they all felt like different bubbles. And I always felt like I was always working on something and that something always had the name of a project. So right. it was kind of, I don't know, it was kind of just ingrained in my brain, I guess, and from the experience that I had when I was younger. Yeah, yeah. What got you to uh, Costa Rica and Ecuador? So my dad is from Ecuador. Um, right. I've been traveling there since I could barely, since I probably couldn't even speak. <laughs> Um, Costa Rica, my mom is a teacher. So when we were in, uh, elementary school, she won a sabbatical for like third grade to go move to Costa Rica for the whole year and teach there. So I got dragged along. I did not want to do it. But now that I look back on it, bro, it's like probably one of the best things that's probably ever happened to me. And I, I don't know when I was there, it was very hard to one, make friends. Like Vlad was saying, when you're like moving to a new place, you don't even know like the language and stuff. But it's really just like pushing yourself to make friends. And sometimes, like he was saying when he was at school, and this guy was like, you remember, like, we were best friends. Like, that's kind of how it felt. Like, you walk up to somebody and somebody's like, hey, you're my friend out. It's like, dang, bro. Like, really? Like, you mean that? Like, thank you. Like, let's be friends. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's I don't know, bro. Was, that's what it was, bro. It was really cool. I just love travel. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Dude, what what is waking up? You know, you don't know the language. You're going to school. You're trying to make friends. What does that look like? Um, traumatic. At the time, I didn't know anything else. Like it was very, very uh, hard. And I don't want to make this sound like a sappy story at all. Like, believe me, I'm very grateful that happened. But at the time, that's what it really felt like. And when I was in Costa Rica, almost every day when I went to school, I didn't really have too many people talk like talking to me. I didn't. I didn't have any friends. So. I, every time when I came home, I'm like, Mom, I want to go to Ecuador. I want to be with my family. I know nobody in Costa Rica. I know everybody in Ecuador. I want to go to Ecuador. Uh, and so I, that's what, exactly what I did after a while living in Costa Rica when I lived in Ecuador, just with my dad and went to school, did some other projects, <laughs> projects there again. Uh, and yeah, then we moved back to Minnesota. But that's, I would say, traumatic, bro. But now, uh, super grateful. Yeah. Dude, I've been watching uh, the the untold documentaries on netflix you ever watch those what is that uh it dives into like different sports stories mainly um i'm not gonna lie the one that pulled me in well the one that showed me the series that they did one on jake paul before his nate diaz fight so so you know people were giving him crap like you know that's he's not an athlete why is he getting this whatever anyways uh, and then i watched uh johnny manziel's uh, the texas a&m uh quarterback um, yep. and both of them were like, just their hard childhoods carved them kind of a thing. So not that you had a hard childhood, but your hard experience that, that year was kind of a harder experience to go through really like shapes you in a way. Like it's, it's just kind of like a weird idea to come across. Like, is it like, so what's the better way to live an easy childhood and not have those experiences or to have some challenging experience? Like. What's the win there, you know? It's kind of like a double negative almost. I don't know. The way I look at it, I feel like no matter like what you grew up through, like obviously some people grow up through some terrible situations and some people are very, very, very fortunate. Regardless of what you have, like we're all very fortunate to even just wake up, right? We're even, it's it's so crazy that we're even on this planet. First off, I think it's like one in a trillion or one in three trillions of a chance that me or you are even here with what we actually look like, you know, so... Right. Regardless of where you are, who you are, like we are special. We're here for real, hundred percent. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> dude. That's ah, oh, dude. I've been getting that vibes from every single one of your videos, and you speak it even on a call. That's freaking awesome, dude. Sometimes I like. Sometimes I like try to live it. I'm like, all right, I gotta be positive and stuff. But it's like, am I actually gonna be positive today? Like, I'm a little bit of a faker sometimes, but I love that. And I think I think the best part about like try trying to live happy is some people really think that like oh i'm gonna get happy and i'm gonna stay happy forever like that's just the way it's gonna be like one day it's gonna turn bro every single day you gotta like you really really have to put it in your mental like today might be a very hard day but you have to find the light in every dim situation you really have to sometimes like you said so you have to act in order to even like i guess achieve and at the end of the day it's all waves and if you don't learn how to start riding those waves Sometimes you might be under the wave getting barreled, and sometimes you might be on top inside the barrel like, yeah, look at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was I was looking at I was looking at a podcast clip. Uh it was uh Joe Rogan and David Goggins, two pretty big names nowadays. And and Joe's like, Yeah, people people just wanna like live happy now because they know that maybe someday uh it'll all stop like you're just done at one point you have your golden years and david goggins just laughs he's like it never stops dude it never stops <laughs> that's what you gotta I learn to ride the waves like you said what do you got it goes on life goes on i know you can't really see it but <laughs> no you said that's sick man what are you what are your thoughts on taz I think if if you want them, go get them. Who cares what anybody else says? This is my human body. This is not a rep representation of my soul. Right. This is my art. This is my canvas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a, I have a, I have a, I have a hard time because my my mindset is either I want a hundred or I want zero, and that's a hard, <laughs> that's a hard balance. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Hell yeah. I fell in love with it though. I, I really like you know I put messages on my body that are able to tap me back into those mindsets that I had when I got the tattoo. 
So that's kind of, I kind of use them as a, as a way to motivate myself every day and, and keep going, keep, keep aspiring for the person I want to be and be a, be a role model for the, the person I needed when I was growing up is who I want to be right now. Yeah. When'd you get that wrist one? What was your mindset? Uh, this one was, this one was pretty, uh, pretty recent. Uh, I was in Flagstaff, Arizona, just working. And like I said, I moved back here because this isn't something I like wanted to do. And regardless of what you do in your life, if you don't like what you're doing, like right this second, just know like it can change. You just have to implement the changes you need. So I was thinking in my head, like, this isn't going to be forever. I might not like it right now. Regardless, life goes on. It just keeps going. It's going to go. It's up to you on how you want to perceive it. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think about when you see it day to day? Do you do you only think about the situation sometimes or does every time you look at it, it brings you back to it? I would say, I mean, sometimes like I look at my skin and I forget I even have tattoos, right? Like I'll look at it and I'll be like, oh, damn, okay. Or there's there's sometimes where you, you, you look and it's, it's not even there, right? You don't even look at it. But yeah. I think it's those times when, when you're feeling kind of down and you just like you're sitting reflecting and, and talking to yourself that you're able to like – at least for me, one of my practices, sorry to kind of just jump all over the place. Back I love the way my head works. <laughs> but I think sometimes like when I'm just sitting and I'm reflecting, one of my practices is trying to like really be here. So like even if it's me just looking at this like trash can, bro, like just look at it and just be like, okay, that is a trash can. Like I can see the curvature on it. Like my eyes are detailed enough for me to actually see that. Like I'm here right now. Like nothing matters i don't have a past i don't have a future like i'm just like right here right now and when i when i do that practice i just tend to look around and i tend to like look at my hands like this like pretend like you're like a minecraft character and you like first like you're looking at your hands and then you go down so when i do that that's why i have some hand tattoos because i i don't know for some reason that's just my practice and it's able to fuel me sometimes when i need it yeah <laughs> Funny you said the hand thing. When you said the trash can, I was about to say, dude, I do the same thing. I just look at the back really? of my hand. And then you're like, yo, I look at my hand. I'm like, dang, they are doing go. this thing. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Dude. Sometimes it's as simple as that practice, bro. What what made you like, what makes you look at the back of your hand? Like, is it a practice or what kind of thing is it? Well, uh, ever since, well, I did it mostly in college. College was a was a weird time for me. It wasn't like too too engaged in it or whatever. So like a lot of lot of battle with just uh, you know not enjoying where I was at. You know, wishing for other things made me pretty dang anxious, man. So uh, a lot of yeah. the times you're thinking about your past or you're thinking about your future to the point where your mind gets blurry. So like it was out of necessity. Yeah. I'm just like, yo, dude, <laughs> I'm right here right now. Like you just gotta <laughs> focus on this. So. Now, now that I'm finishing school, yeah, go ahead. No, I, uh, I withdrew, um, like a semester and a half in. Um, nice. if I wanted to, I could, I could end up with a with a two year degree, pretty, pretty easy. Yeah. But I don't need to right now, so I didn't end up finishing I school. My, my, yeah, yeah. How about you? Do you do school? I, I went to Mankato for a year and uh and a half and the same thing you said bro i went there and i'm just not engaged bro my mind is somewhere else my mind is creating content and i'm going to school because all my teachers all my family all my friends oh go to school bro go to school it'll be worth it hell nah <laughs> yeah hell nah so yeah. i dropped out same thing with you i i could get the two year very soon if i if i wanted to but honestly i would rather like you were saying let's push the narrative not everybody needs to go to school yeah yeah for sure for sure so some people do what'd you what'd you what'd you what'd you do right after you got done or you with you from school is that when you went to illinois nah nah, nah, nah. so right after I, I did that with school so i'm living in mankato at this time i um i actually have like the brand like project 118 the house name that we were living in was 118 um and so at that time i was i was covered in video editing i'm filming every single day I'm editing every single day. I'm uploading weekly at the time. I'm pushing my my creative limits when it comes to editing and just like my vision, um, and really trying to like just hone in on like who I am. And then um, right when I right when I dropped out, it was just so overwhelming with everything. And then it was perfect timing right for uh right for COVID to come and, and hit us all with it. <laughs> Everybody has their own little stories of what happened in that time, but that is the time when I figured out. All right, I should probably figure out who Luis is. 
I'm not going to figure out every chapter, but let's figure out the chapter that he needs to figure out right now. Um, and The Power of Now was a book that I was recommended by a lot of people. And so I picked it up. I read the book. I really took it serious and I really implemented all the practices. And that it I swear to God, bro, it changed my whole entire life, my whole entire perspective on everything. And it it really, really actually made me grateful for this life when before I was super grateful still, but I wasn't the best like son. I wasn't the best brother. I wasn't the best version of myself that I could have been. And obviously every single day I, I, I'm going to step to become a better version. But that book was probably the first step in in what is making me um, try to become more um, of a brighter aura for people to receive when I walk in a room. Yeah. So what what was your first action steps after, you know, reading that and having a having a kind of a mindset switch? So it was COVID. We couldn't really do too much. Right. So yeah. that's when I was just like, what can we film, bro? Let's film a room tour. I already filmed a room tour before that. And it, it got pretty decent views, actually. So I was like, OK, let's run it. Let's run up another one. Uh, that one's super fun to film and, and do because there was nothing else to do, bro. Um, every single day it was uh, either working at Walmart during the COVID times or um, at home filming just the most random videos throwing like it's college time. So you could think about it, bro. Like, throwing TVs down the stairs, just messing around with all of your college roommates. I had like seven roommates, so it was never a dull moment. <laughs> but, um, but next steps after that, I would say was uh, traveling actually to Des Moines, Iowa and going and filming some music videos. I never did it before. I met this dude in high school, uh, college. And he knew an artist that needed music videos. And he gave me an opportunity to come down there. He said, I filmed three music videos. He'll get me a camera. I'm like, what? I'm like, come on, bro. Let's do it. I'm I'm there tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I would say just implementing a bunch of different small steps. Um, really, really questioning this life and questioning a lot of people around me. And going on to a bunch of random little like city shoots. Like you were saying, when you and Henry met, you just walked around the city. I did that in Mankato. I was just walking around the city. I was just doing whatever. And there was nobody there because, bro, it's COVID. <laughs> uh, and then uh, to carry the story on, it's almost over, so don't worry. <laughs> but during during the COVID time, they had those unemployment checks. And I was like, bro, why am I like, why am I like, how, how can I work? Like, I feel like I'm putting myself and other people at danger, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so they gave you like unemployment checks. So. I went and traveled and just traveled to like nature spots. Uh, went to like California, Arizona. I met some some other creators too, and we just kind of traveled to all the bunch of different nature monuments and honestly just try to figure this life out and just live it to the most and live it with your friends, bro. That's just filming it all. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's translated to this day. You're doing the same stuff. I mean, I see you yeah, my yeah. feed more than anyone else. Really? That's fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not. No, it, no, no, I freaking love it. I mean, people, you, people, they, they get embarrassed to post a lot, which I lost that filter years ago. I'm just like, I don't care anymore. Like, I'm just going to make it, post it, you know, the yeah. or whatever. But kind of funny how that works. I love it, bro. What is your, um, I wanted to ask you this the other day too, because I was listening to your podcast and you had, uh, you had an answer saying like, regardless of it we would have these conversations regardless so like recording it is a is a huge plus for you um when you look into the future though do you still see it like this like something where it's going to be over the phone and and like iphone or over the computer just talking to people regular regular or you would you want to translate into having like a little studio where people can come in and talk with you um my goal my goal and my non-hesitation to do it over the phone is um I don't want to give myself zero excuse. I, w I don't want to have a single excuse to, to have. So if one of those excuses could be, oh my gosh, we're not going to have perfect in-person conversations. I shouldn't make a pot. Like, screw yeah. that. Like, if, if, if being on the computer is going to get me talking to people and it's a little less of a conversation piece because, you know, you can't <laughs> bounce off perfectly from each other, then heck, I'll yeah. do it. Um, if, if being in person... And the opportunity is there is going to enhance the pod like then sure like if a friend's in town and i can set up a camera like i just want this to be a free-flowing thing at the end like of the day you know like 
my last pod, I forgot to turn a light on. So like by the end of it, it was dark and my like face was all <laughs> pixely. And like some people would freak out about that. And I'm just kind of like laughing because it's just like I still had a good combo. You still see my body figure. Uh, so yeah, whatever, whatever free flows is what I want. So um, whatever the first thing comes to my head. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. Because, yeah, if we have the capabilities to be doing projects like this, why aren't we doing them, you know? So yeah. that's, that's why I'm doing this pod. I think one of one of the coolest things that you said, too, was, like, the excuses part, right? Like, you don't need any requirements to do this. We all have, most of us, the ones that are blessed enough to have it, have an iPhone or have a phone that they can have a phone call with. So I really like that. And everybody asked me, too, like, oh, uh, like, what are you shooting on, bro? Like, like, what kind of camera do you have? I'm like, bro, I got an iPhone. Like, I have other cameras and stuff. My my most used equipment is my iPhone. It is beat up. My my screen is cracked. My back camera is cracked. If, if I put this in the light, you can see the cracks. <laughs> like, you got to use what you have. If you are creative and you have the drive to do it, you will use whatever. So I really, really admire, like, you know, that vision to we're having a conversation. Let's just let's do it regardless of how good it turns out. At least we had a conversation. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's it's funny. Uh I used to be I used to enjoy talking about gear and that was a really fun thing for me. Um but it just turned into like, all right, what piece of equipment can I buy that makes me not think about equipment the most? Mm -hmm. Um so right now it's a Sony A seven three. It's been that for years and it's not it's not putting me any down uh if i didn't do this professionally i wouldn't even need that but but for right now it's the most seamless piece of equipment that i can do with my stuff but like i said all of my videos normally that i post on the internet obviously the pod is recorded on my laptop here uh, yeah. and all of my <laughs> tiktok all my tiktok videos are recorded on my phone um there's no yeah. excuses bro to this game <laughs> uh, yeah nothing but i gotta i gotta give it to him uh maybe get a phone with a half zoom because that's kind of nice the half zoom what do you watch what do you mean what is that just the wide angle on the phone oh so yeah. like yeah, yeah yeah that's nice do you have that not on my front screen i got the i got the iphone 13 so i have three yeah you got back, so like three, you know five. When I can record like this, I really like that angle. Yeah. It makes it makes things look really nice. So so if you got a phone with not a half zoom, you can hope for a phone with a half zoom. I mean, I get that. <laughs> but you got no excuses to record stuff. Nothing. Yeah. I think yeah. one of my favorite parts was uh as I'm doing this as this sales job that I I actually did pretty like it, bro. It was pretty cool. But it was just stripping me from my creative abilities sometimes, not all the times. But I find myself more less creative than I find myself creative. And I, I'm trying to hold myself accountable to be more creative and push my mindset. Because like you said, our brains are really, really interesting, bro. Right. Um, but when I was on the job, I'm doing door-to-door -door sales and I'm on my phone, bro, just taking pictures, taking videos. And I'm like, bro, I don't even have a camera. I'm not like dressed up for like like what I would normally wear if I'm like vlogging or like walking around, but like I'm still doing it. Like that just shows like I don't know. I, it just made me so happy just having like an iPhone 13. <laughs> I don't know. It was really, it was a crazy step because they had that 0.5 and the times three. And I think they, uh, I think they released the raw setting on the iPhone. And I was like, wow, like now we're going to be able to really go crazy now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And to be real, I don't, I don't even use the, the raw setting even because I'm just like, I just, when I'm using the iPhone, I just want it to be easy, man. You know, whatever yeah. seamless. <laughs> same, same with my podcast. Whatever's seamless, I'll do it, man. I love it, bro. Hell yeah. You inspired me. I was talking to my, uh, my buddy UJ the other day. We were in Chicago at this time and we were just talking about, cause we had a little podcast back in the day called this and that, uh, right before we moved out for the solar, uh, sales, um, and we just stopped it, bro, because we, we just literally stopped everything creative to go do that for, for money. We don't need, bro, screw the money, bro. I'm sorry. I got a, I got a vision, right? 
So uh, you inspired me to start. I was thinking doing journal entries just on my voice memos. And I don't care what they sound like. Like my vision was like, I'm going to be on a photo shoot. I'm going to have myself mic'd up and I'm just going to type. And it's going to be just a journal entry. I don't care what I say. I don't care if there's a long break in there. Let's upload it. So like I said, my 80 year old self or whoever wants to join the journey can join the journey. And it's more of a in tune, in depth kind of feeling of behind the scenes of, of our lives. Right. Dang. I've never heard that perspective of like doing just an audio, like you'll, you'll, you'll be able to look back at that, close your eyes and just have yeah. random stuff pop up. And you're like, oh my gosh, those sounds. That's crazy. <laughs> right, bro. Or like, even for you, you, you were saying the other day on the podcast, like you watch these podcasts back, you watch them over. Like you, how long have you been doing this for? This is, you're going to be my 12th. So basically 12 or 13 weeks. So. Congratulations. Well, in those 12 to 13 weeks, I guarantee you've listened to a couple of your podcasts in the past. Um, it's only been this much time. And there's all life in front of us for you to be able to look back and listen to these. And you're going to be like, wow, bro, like, that's where my head was at. That's the questions I asked that person. Like, wow, that's that's cool how my brain was working then because I guarantee it's not going to be the same in the future. <laughs> it's not, dude. I'm I've, even a year has has been a lot of time. Like like I said, my mindset a year ago, not even remotely close to what I'm thinking about now. It's it's funny how that works. Super. <laughs> what made you um drop out of school though? Um, I like no, dude, you're chilling. Uh, I had I had one single client. Um, that I was doing while I was in school. Um, and that gave me some confidence to just be like, okay, I can scrape by just doing this one thing and trying to push for more things. So, uh, I decided to go for it. Um, so that, that's what, that's what, uh, gave me the confidence to get out of it. But also equally, I just, I just didn't like where the the school was taking me. Um, you know, when it, when it comes to when it comes to business degrees, it's a little more of a toss up of like where you end up and if it's going to be good for you or not. So it's a little more of a toss up of a degree, um, especially for someone with, you know, entrepreneurial thoughts and, and wanting to do things their way. Um, it's it's kind of more of a risk for me. So I I just I just went out and I've been trying to build that client base ever since. Let's network. Everybody hit them up. Hit them up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's for real, though. That's awesome, bro. You, I applaud you for that. Do you go to networking events? Not like networking events, but I would say any event where I can bring my camera um, and it's more creative. Um, as of right now, I'm going to start just going to as, as many as possible, as many as that I'm I'm free for. Yeah. Um, but like yeah. business or networking, nah, nah. <laughs> I would, I would, but I haven't yet. Do you have any aspiration to just have like a... So for me, you know Kate Hansen. Who? Kate Hansen. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, uh, he's a friend. Uh, they went to the same high school as Flat and Henry. Uh, I've been connecting with him recently, obviously because he plugged me in there. And he's like, okay. when it comes to business, I love business to be boring, and I've never related it to it more. Like if I can have a very <laughs> consistent flow in business, that's dope. So I don't mind doing boring client work for that's fun to me um do you share that at all or do you have more of like a creative creative flow to it i have so i would say it's a little bit of both i I bring my own creativity to everything i do but i say like every single work if if i think it's fun if it looks like cool or if it intrigues me for whatever reason even if it is boring like let's go do it bro. that's another piece of the puzzle right that's another journey that you can that's another project (laughs) yeah right like yeah you have to say yes in this life bro. you you can't keep saying no to these opportunities but you do have to know when to say no though right you know? right well i challenge you join me and join me and Cade. just go to your basic like networking events in your town look up chamber of commerce near me and then they'll have a schedule of events and you should just start popping out to those i'm doing that for my local thing i haven't actually seen much come from it but i met dope okay. people i know you like meeting dope people yeah, highly suggest you get into that. That's awesome. That yeah, that sounds amazing. I suggest I have another challenge for everybody that's listening to this podcast or watching it on here. Do the same thing, the same exact thing that he told you. Go look that up and 
go just put yourself out there. That's the only way you can become the person that you want to become. I swear to God, that's the only way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've already I've already beat this dead horse, but um, we I think our our generation has uh overexpressed the usefulness of social media like use social media and you're instantly good like that's kind of the message i've taken from it that's not exactly true we kind of forget about just the basic like human to human interaction so that's what this going to these events like that really helps out is just making sure you're getting your face in front of people uh i like it that's very cool to be honest yeah i mean my 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 happiest points in my day which is funny because we spend so much time trying to push towards what we want to do or whatever but my happiest points are yeah. just like talking to the same baristas every day talking to the <laughs> same people i don't even talk to people at the gym sometimes the gym is just yeah. like sm smiling at the same people every day I mean, yeah people are the key man yeah i think community for me has been the key like if i didn't if i didn't surround myself around like the right community I don't know if I would be the same per I, actually I would not be the same person I am today especially for, that's for sure but I really like that you said networking bro and going on like putting yourself out there because that's literally this part of my journey right now like that is what I'm focused on if I could name this part of the journey it's called network yeah yeah no it's underrated so super I, lo I love how you just take it and it's like all right that's easy I can do that it's like, yeah, it's true. It's that easy, man. I love it. I would say like, even if it, if it isn't easy for you, that, that feeling that you get when it's like uncomfortable or you want to stay home and you just want to scroll on your phone or, you know, you might, oh, I feel sick or I'm not trying to do this or I'm not trying to do that. Like that is the feeling that you should strive for to push yourself to go out there and go, go put yourself in front of those uncomfortable situations. Cause it, it's going to push you, bro. It's going to teach you so many lessons that you would have probably never have learned if you were to just stay home and you know be comfortable yeah they know yeah for sure for sure um i got a uh, good question for you bro yeah it hit me dude <laughs> what is the coolest place you've ever traveled to ever it can be Mine. boring oh mine's easy man i i uh i have family in orange county which is right next to la county um it's beautiful yeah uh, it's just it's oh, yeah. that easy um <laughs> he said i was just that easy yeah i love yeah well some some one of my uh, cousin's friends cousins from california that's who i visit um one of my cousin's friends said i've traveled the world and it's just kind of hard because orange county is just the most beautiful thing i've ever seen <laughs> and i'm just like well shoot that was easy already been there <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but no oh no his his phone probably died <laughs> That's all right. Oh, no. was bro hey he's back i don't know what happened bro i'm just sitting here and my screen just turned black my fault <laughs> no you're chilling bro what were we on about i was just gonna ask you if you could i know you said orange county is very beautiful it's the best place it was an easy answer but if you had to pick a, a spot outside of the united states what's something that like you're like oh i gotta go there i gotta go there uh I think just anywhere, because I've never been outside the U.S., so anywhere is a what? start, um, but uh, yeah, 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 dude, funny how that works, but um, just, I think <laughs> Europe would be a, a fun place, um, hell yeah, literally anywhere, uh, I'm, I'm pretty not very picky when it comes to traveling, I'm just like, dude, new cultures are dope, perspective's dope, Super. Uh, what about you, bro? Um... If I had to pick one spot right this given second, I would probably the the place that pops up in my head right now is uh is Greece. I don't know why. I don't even really know what it looks like off the top of my head. It just popped in my head right now. So I had to say it. 
Um, but bro, let's. I, I heard you and Vlad uh, talking about skydiving, and he mentioned the Henry too. I think it would be so cool if we could get a, like a group of all of us and ready to go. Have you? Did you go yet, or is that still in the picture? That's still that's still in the toss up, man. We haven't gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boring location, cheap or cool location, expensive. Oh, uh, I'm I'm going cheap, man. All my extra money pushing toward the business, man. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that, I just wanted to see what you were thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, dude. I, Born in skydiving I'm itself. Minnesota. I wouldn't mind either. I mean, I always love a trip to Minnesota. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to figure this out, bro. We're gonna have to hop on a call with all of them and figure it out. Cause I need to go, bro. I've been pushing it out for so long, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah. Skydiving's easy because, like, skydiving is an experience in itself. No matter if it's a, a boring location or if it's mountainous, like, you're still jumping out of an airplane, man. That's going to be rough. Well, so. <laughs> it sounds even crazier when you say it like that, bro. Even though that's all that I'm I mean, it sounds crazy. I mean, I'm just saying it how it is. I'm an honest <laughs> man here. I love it, bro. I'm stoked. Yeah. Um, I had another question, but I forgot it. Dude, that's that's what podcasting is all about, man. You just you just start blanking. It's it's funny, <laughs> you know. It's kind of funny once you hit that record button, you're just you're zoned into the moment, especially when you're wearing these. Like I forget yeah. about like you're so present. Same thing as looking at your hand. It's almost like podcast. <laughs> yeah, it really actually is. I'm excited to get back into. One of my journal entries, um, this right here, very I was excited for it all day. I can't lie. Um, yeah. And then third, being able to hop back onto the journey of podcasting with my friend and being a mm-hmm. side host to his show. So I'm excited yeah. to. I don't know. It's it's cool, That's, bro. It's a it's a cool niche. Yeah, it really is. Has he been running one without you, or would it be jumping back into the one that you were doing, or is this a whole other guy? Uh, now this is the same dude. Um, we'd be jumping back into the same exact uh thing that we're doing. We might, who knows, rebrand it or rename it or whatever. I don't even know. Um, it was my idea for the journal entries, just like raw. Um, and his vision was more of like a production. So like have it like video set up, have like the microphones, like actually like good quality, right? So I'm excited to to tap back into both and, and just see how it is, and even just join like other people's uh, conversations like this like bro this is awesome (laughs) thank you again i appreciate it yeah no problem man it's it's it's, yeah it's it's a fun thing to do uh i want to ask you about this how was uh how was your chicago thing how was Lollapalooza? man first time i went to a festival besides uh sound set in minnesota a long time ago um bro great experience i i didn't even I wasn't even going to go. I didn't even really know that it was going to be here. And then like a month before I saw like a bunch of ads. It's like Lollapalooza, Lollapalooza. And I'm like, man, that sucks. I wish I was in Illinois. And I'm like, wait, hold on, bro. I'm in Illinois right now. <laughs> like, what? Um, and so some of my friends, they had a hotel downtown. And I'm like, all right, I'm taking the train from Naperville and I'm going to Chicago. And I'm going to just sleep on the ground at their hotel. Like, that's just what it's going to be. I have no plans on going to Lala, the event. I just wanted to be in Chicago for that event because I knew there was going to be a lot going on. And it was going to be just like a fun vibe. Uh, I ended up going to uh, A Boogie after show, a Destroy Lonely after show. Um, and then I actually, uh, on Saturday, I bought the ticket because it was the cheapest ticket. It was like 120 bucks, 130 bucks, And I'm like, I have to go. Like one of my favorite artists, Destroy Lonely, is performing live. I've already seen him two times before. I need to see him at a festival, see what it would be like at a festival. Um, I think, like, the festival was cool and all. I'm not going to put no hype on Talala. Everybody already does that. It's a cool experience. If you haven't been to one, I would definitely recommend it. But I would say, to me, it made it so much cooler and so much more fun to me being with my friends at a cool location, listening to some random music, um, and just vibing out with them, bro. Like, really just you know, having a uh, intimate time with, with cool friends and people that you actually consider like real friendships. I don't know. It was really cool. And then cool, cool part of the story after the next day, um, 
I snuck into Lala, bro. Shh, shh, don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> I didn't jump the fence. Um, and I cannot give it out because I don't want this to not not work before. But it had something to do with the little, uh, the little wristbands. That's all I'll say. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, because all I'm, all I'm hearing is Lala's a bust if you don't have people. And community's awesome is what I'm trying to hear. Yeah, pretty much. You hit it right on the right on the nail. <laughs> whatever the saying is, I don't know. Yeah, no, whatever. Dude, what, Have you been what, to any music festivals? Oh, I'm not. Just like in general, I'm not a huge live music guy. Like, like you catch me the second the second half, I'm just like I'm ready to to head, you know. But uh, Lala would be a fun event because obviously it just gathers in a lot of fun individuals, and you can you can start catching people, especially when you're networking with people, especially on the internet. Uh, you, they'll group together at these events. So that's the fun part right. about it, but never been to a multi-day festival like that or anything. Uh, it was funny too. Cause one of the days I was there, uh, shout out Henry. He was, uh, he was recording for party alone. Yeah. Didn't get to see him, but I knew he was there and I knew he was doing his thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's, it's a fun thing, man. And it's, it's fun that Henry's getting the opportunity to record a place just like that. Man, like, just i'm so proud of the kid bro i haven't even known him for so long but like hearing those placements and hearing you know what he's doing on the day I'm like bro congratulations <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he's playing his cards right he's got he's he's uh knowing knowing what he's about and knowing what he wants so he's he's killing it um hell uh, yeah for sure but uh something toward the end that i like to ask is is kind of like what's next for you man Right now, um, it's a good question. I, I really like it. And the reason why I say that is because right now there's a bunch of unknown, but there's also a bunch of aspirations and dreams that I do want to to do while I'm here in Minnesota. Because I would say the first step is moving here, uh, finding a spot, surrounding myself around the right roommates. I want to make sure that my roommates are creative um, and not just a regular, regular you know, person or an NPC maybe. Um, I want to be able to really, really hone in and do photography, whether that's regular portraits, senior pictures or a uh, sporting event, maybe a runway show or whatever. And then I also I want to get into like the modeling scene, bro. I did it when I was younger and I was not able to really like carry it out. So uh, next week I actually have a like audition for like a modeling agency, which I'm, I'm actually really excited, really excited. I just had an interview with one a couple of days ago. And I got the position, but it wasn't what I was necessarily looking for. Um, so I didn't actually take that. Um, but yeah, I would just say right now is really just the time where it's it's called networking and it's called getting back into the groove of things. Because if you looked at my uh, YouTube, I have not posted a video on there in a while. And it kind of, it kinda, every time I look at it, it kind of makes me sad. Like, that's like what I actually like. I love doing YouTube and I love just making like random little videos. They don't even have to be good. It's, it's literally just posting a memory. So that's really, really what I want to get into. And then also the clothing, bro, like really tapping back into, you know, what first made me want to get in and really just keep and keep grinding, bro. For real. That's the next step. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope, bro. Project 118. Thanks, bro. <laughs> it might rebrand. It might say the same. Who knows? We'll, we'll see what the future holds, bro. Yeah, that's kind of like the same thing. I, I, my first venture was a clothing brand, and it, that's the same thing for me. It's like, dude, dude, I want to throw some pieces of clothing out. I don't care what name it's under. It's just fun to do every once in a while, you know? Exactly. And one thing I really like about uh, the vision that I had first starting off with the clothing was I just created a blank slate with, with Project 118 just embroidered on the front, and it was just a black hoodie. My vision on it was I wanted to collaborate and I wanted to network with as many people so they can get their art piece on a blank canvas that had my like name on it too. So that way I'm, I'm working with people and they're able to share their their vision um, as well so we can like work together. Like, I think that's just so, I don't know. I think collaboration is key. In, right. Tomorrow's time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 100%. Uh, it's funny, like, 
every single opportunity I get, it's because of it's because of collaborations and stuff. It <laughs> seems it seems like it's harder than that, but it's really just like, all right, when's my next collaboration coming? It's coming. I know yeah. it is. <laughs> it's yeah, funny how that goes. That's uh, not to keep carrying on or nothing, but that's like collaboration is literally the thing that can is is and can be holding you back from your next venture, like. The, if I was not recording and uploading every single day on YouTube, I would not have had the opportunity to work with a brand called like Paxson or work with Manscaped or have an opportunity to model for Playboy. Like those would have never happened if I didn't put myself out there and as well, like put the message that I'm open to collaboration. I think that's very key to and reaching out. You have to reach out. Big time. Yeah, people, I mean, you really, for this last year, it's, it's, life gives you what you make of it so if you're not yeah. if you're not if you're not interacting with people uh they're they're not gonna get back to you you're not doing anything you know it's it's just you're not giving <laughs> anything so it's funny how that works besides the podcast what do you see for your uh near future what are some of your short-term goals yeah so um big big personal brand guy i want to hone in on personal brands so obviously podcast helps that but uh you you see yeah. my tiktok videos keeping those up yep. helps the personal brand um i really want to get into like blogging on the web um okay and even if that involves ai dude i don't care i just need some blogs going up on a website and having that reach go in on this local stuff so just I like honing it. in and getting the best personal brand I can get. That's step one. Uh, okay. Step two is is um, a team. So once I have a strong okay. personal brand, I want to get a team going, a separate thing. So that's that's kind of uh, where I'm going. So uh, making sure I got that personal brand down, and then uh, building a business beyond that afterwards. So. And- any any thoughts on what the the business venture might include? Yeah, I'm already doing it, so it's it's just uh, video video production, uh, social media management, getting into maybe web design, and just getting people getting their brands out there to the customers in need. It's okay. I want to run my own thing. I want to scale my own business. That's that's what I'm going with. It. That's my next steps. So keep going, bro. You got it. That's for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love listening to the, if you listen to Josh's podcast, which is uh, two before this one, that's his saying. He always says, keep going. Um, he'll, he make, <laughs> he'll, he'll make, he'll make TikToks and it's just like him walking around his house. And then on the middle of the text, it says, keep going. Cause he just wants people to scroll and see that message. Yes. It's, it's so positive. Hey. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 what we need to push for more. More people that are willing to spread a, a good message. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Hell yeah. But dude, I, I appreciate you coming on and talking. It's been it's been real. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> maybe only in the future, short. if uh we got a, a video spot, maybe we can, you know, meet in person and have a little like video. I think that's the craziest part. Me and you have never met before, strictly over the internet and look. We we're able to share a beautiful conversation. I appreciate it, bro. For real. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your positivity, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> I try my best for myself and others around me, but you you do you do the same, bro. Keep keep stepping and I know you have that vision. I know you have that drive. So not only just for yourself, but your your inner child and, and your future self. Like keep pushing and keep stepping for your dreams because you're 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 there you're already there, but you're you know you still need to make the steps. Everybody still has steps they need to make. Just keep right. going. If you need to go backwards for a little bit, understand that's okay because it's just gonna be a slingshot. Yeah, dude. You got to appreciate bro. you. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I'll I'll get my number to you too. You can always text if you're ever in the Des Moines area or anything. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> let's do it. Maybe let's do a little photo song. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That'll be dope. All right, yeah, let's yeah. stop this. Thank you, bro.